So let's try another one with women's weights. So um, old jet ejection, ejection seats designed f with men in mind. So they're designed for people who weigh between 140 and 211 pounds. Okay, so let's talk about women then. They have normally distributed weights with a mean of 143 pounds, standard deviation of 29. So we want to know if we pick one woman randomly, will that seat work for her? what's the probability that her weight is between 140 and 211 pounds. And then we're going to look again at a group of 36 women and what's the probability that their mean weight falls in that range. With this one the picture actually isn't quite as important because this is the case where you want to know the probability being between two numbers and if you think back that's actually what normal CDF does. It finds the probability that a value is between two numbers. So we can just do normal CDF. We want it to be between 140 and 211 and then we put in the mean and the standard deviation for women's weights and that comes out to 0.532 or a 53.2 percent chance that one randomly selected woman would fall in that interval. That actually also means that 53.2 percent of women have weights in that range. So the the probability is actually the same as a percentage of the population. Now what if I'm looking at a group of 36 randomly selected women and the probability that the mean of those 36 women's weights will be in that range? Well, um, the sample size is over 30, so we're safe already. Um, but it did say in the problem that the population was normally distributed, so we actually would have been okay anyway. So probability of the mean being between those numbers, normal CDF between 140 and 211, I can still use the mean of 143, but when you're talking about the groups, you have to adjust the standard deviation. So 29 was the standard deviation. I'm going to divide that by the square root of 36. Since square root of 36 comes out even to just 6, you could probably go ahead and just say 29 over 6 in there. You can do it either way. But so I'll get that entered in and that comes out to 0 0.733 or 73.3 percent chance that if you randomly chose 36 women their average weight would be in that range. And this does make sense because the larger the group the more precise the estimation meaning that since we're looking at an interval that hovers right around the mean for women anyway when we looked at the probability for one woman being in that interval it was 53.2 percent. Okay, So there's still almost a 50 percent chance that a woman could not be in that interval, that she could be kind of farther away from the average. But when we look at a group it's a lot harder to deviate from the average when you're taking a bunch of women and averaging them together. So it's much more likely with a group that the average is going to come out somewhere around the average for all of them. So you've got a higher chance here that um, the mean weight would be in this interval since this interval is close to the average for all women. Okay, another example. Tire manufacturer claims that its tires will last an average of 60,000 miles with a standard deviation of 3,000. We test 64 tires. What's the probability that the average for those tires is less than 59,500 miles? Okay, so when you're running through one of these problems, the first thing you need to say is, I'm looking at a group, I need to see if central limit theorem applies. Uh, does the problem state anywhere that there's a normal distribution? Well, no, it does not. So I need to check the sample size then. We are over 30 because we're checking 64 tires. So that's okay. We can continue. So I'm going to draw the picture, put the mean in the middle, figure out where 59,500 is. It's over on the left. I want to know the probability of being less than that. So I'm shading over to the left. This is a case where my piece is less than half. So I'm going to have to do 0.5 minus and I'm going to have to subtract out normal CDF for the piece between 59,500 and 60,000. Take that chunk out of the half. And then the mean is 60,000. I need to adjust the standard deviation because I'm looking at a group of 64 tires. So 3,000 divided by the square root of 64. And so that comes out to 0 0.0912 probabilities are three significant digits. That zero at the front doesn't count. So I've got to go out to the to 
0.0912 to get my three significant digits. So it's a 9.12% chance that this group of 64 tires would have an average less than that. In this example, a supervisor has a mean and a standard deviation for salaries of employees in his department. We're going to take a sample of 25 employees and we're going to see what the probability is that their average salary would be between 36000 and 42000 It does say to assume that the distribution is normal. So that answers the first question. Do we have a normal distribution? Yes, we do. So we don't have to worry about sample size. It can be under 30 because we have a normal distribution. So we can continue. This is the case where it's between two numbers, so we don't really need a picture. We can put it into normal CDF. 36,000 to 42,000, the mean is 40,000. I'm going to adjust the standard deviation, 15,000 divided by the square root of 25, because that's how many people I'm looking at. And that comes out to 0.656, or a 65.6% .6 chance. Now what if we go back to the tire manufacturer example, and this time we're only taking a sample of 20 tires. Well, that's going to be a problem because in that example we were not told that we were dealing with a normal distribution, so the sample size was very important. And so since we don't have a normal distribution, and in this case we are not looking at a sample larger than 30, we actually can't go any further with this problem. In advanced statistics you would have methods that you could solve this with, but with the methods that we've used in this course we cannot. So you can say something like, we can't continue, sample size is too small, or you can say we can't assume normality, we can't continue. And then one last example going the other direction. So we want to build benches that can seat 18 people. Uh, a lot of times they'll use men's measurements when they do these because men tend to be bigger, so if it's big enough for them, the women would be fine. So men have hip breadths, so width of your hips that are normally distributed with a mean and a standard deviation. We want to know what's the minimum length of the bench if we want a .975 probability that it will fit 18 randomly selected men. Well this is an inverse norm question because I've been given a probability or a percentage. I want a 97.5% chance that a group of 18 men will fit on this bench. So I need to draw the picture, but I'm going to shade in 97.5%. Well, which direction? You have to think about that for a second. Well, I want 97.5% of these groups of men to fit. They wouldn't fit if they were too big. So I want to make sure that 97.5% are small enough. So I'm going to shade to the left. So I'm going to put my X where it goes and then shade over to the left and say that that's 97.5%, 0.975. Since I shaded to the left, that's the direction inverse norm wants. So inverse norm, 0.975, I've got the mean. Don't forget that you have to change the standard deviation when you're looking at a group and their average. So 1 was the standard deviation. I'm going to divide that by the square root of 18 people and then that comes out to 14.86. Don't round yet. Do you think that this bench should be 14.86 inches long for 18 people? That shouldn't make sense. What's actually happened is, remember, we're talking about the average for a group of 18. That's the average per man. So before I round that off, I want to go ahead and hit times 18 multiply that by 18, then round only your final answer. So the total would be 267.5 inches. And I rounded to one decimal place because that was how the mean and the standard deviation in the problem were given.